Hey guys, so here's your semester two final review one, numbers 14 through 26, but like I said in Edulastic, it renumbers them one through 13. So um, number one is the same as number 14, but I'll, I'll just put number one just to keep it simple. So it says, which of the following cube root functions is not one to one? One to one. So cube root functions are usually one to one but sometimes they're not when you can't tell if you're shifting left, right, up or down, vertical stretch, vertical shrink, or a reflection. When you can't tell, it's because you have extra junk in the trunk. Look for extra junk, okay? So in these answer options, the one that's got extra junk in the trunk is gonna be letter C because it's got an X squared. Like D, I can tell we're going left 11, down three. So that one's one to one. C, I can't tell because of the X squared. B, I could tell I'm going right one. The divide by three just means I've got a vertical sh uh, shrink of one third. Here, I, I can tell that I am going left, but because of that two out front, that means I'm gonna have a vertical compression, a vertical shrink, but um, I don't know exactly how far left because I have to factor out the two. So I'm, I'm moving left by some amount. So I could tell I'm going left, I just, I need to figure out the number by dividing by two, but yeah. So that one is one to one. So the extra junk is letter C. So just look for extra stuff. So it was C because we've got F of X equals the cubed root of two X squared plus four. So that X squared is the extra junk. Okay, and that is one. Number two, um, I'll put my work down here. I've got six over x squared minus 25 plus x over x plus five, and we need to add these fractions and simplify them. So we need to get a common denominator, which means I need to factor this denominator so that'll be six over x squared minus 25 factors down to two binomial factors, one with a plus, one with a minus. It's a difference of two perfect squares. So x plus five, x minus five. So now I can see what kind of factors I'm dealing with. I can see that the second fraction has x plus five, but it's missing an x minus five. So I need to make it have it by multiplying by x minus five. But whatever I do to the bottom, I gotta do to the top to keep it balanced. And I am gonna need to distribute that up there. Okay, so now I've got a common denominator, so I'm allowed to add the fractions, but remember, when you add fractions, you keep the denominator, so x plus five, x minus five. And the numerator, I'll have six plus x squared minus five x. That's not in standard form, so I'm gonna flip that around or write it in standard form. So x squared minus five x plus six over x plus five, x minus five. And this might be my answer, but what I need to do next is to double check that nothing else will cancel. So I need to product sum out the numerator. The product is six, the sum is negative five. Two numbers that multiply to six and add up to negative five are negative three and negative two. Negative times negative is positive. Negative three minus two adds up to negative five. Shout out to Jacob, because he got me this pen. I love it. So my droids are negative three and negative two, but if I have an X minus three and an X minus two factor up there, nothing is gonna cancel with the denominator. So I'm just gonna leave my answer like this. So you had to type that into the box. And that's number two. Number three, so it's given the function y equals x squared minus 36 all over x squared minus five x minus six, okay? Um, it says determine the equation for its horizontal asymptote. Put your answer in exact decimal format. So part A is the HA, the horizontal asymptote. So big top, big bottom, or same. I've got the same degree, top and bottom, which means when it's the same, 
the HA is Y equals the LC over LC, the leading coefficient in the top over the leading coefficient in the bottom. They're both ones, one over one is one, so Y equals one is the horizontal asymptote. So that was the answer to part A. For part B, you had to give the coordinate of the hole. Okay, so we need a hole. That means we need to factor this. So the numerator is easy to factor. X squared minus 36 is a difference of squares. X plus six, X minus six. In the denominator, we can product sum that out. I need two numbers that multiply to negative six that add up to negative five. Um, it's gotta be six and one. And let's see, negative six plus one adds up to negative five. So it should be like that. So the X minus six is cancel. There's my hole. So I have a hole at, well, you have to take the X minus six and set it equal to zero and solve for X. So add six over. So X equals six is the X value of the hole. Now we need to find the Y value. So we need to see what's left. I have an X plus six over X plus one left. So that means I need to plug in my whole value in for these x's so I could find the y value. So 6 plus 6 over 6 plus 1 because my whole was a 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. 6 plus 1 is 7. So 12 over 7 is my y value of my whole. And that's the answer to part B. Number 4. I'll put it up here. Number four, I've got a picture of a graph. So it's a rational graph. So I'm gonna start with um, the parent function, um, y equals one over x. If I have a parent function, the parent rational function, the asymptotes are the x and the y axis. And the parent function just hugs the walls in the upper right hand corner and the lower left hand corner looks like that. So on this graph, the parent function is a three over X, but it follows the same stuff. All parent functions start at the origin. So this one, if you follow the asymptotes, moved left two and down one. So we need to go left two. So we have Y equals three over X. This is the new parent. And we need to shift it left two and down one. So left two and down one, left, the left or right move goes with the X. So Y equals three over, left two means I need plus two, because it's the opposite of what we think. Down one is exactly what we think, so I need a minus one on the end. So the only answer option that has that, oops, I accidentally clicked through, is three over X plus two minus one is D. D was the correct option there for number four. Number five. What value of X makes the equation true? We've got one over X minus three equals X over nine minus three X. Anytime you have a fraction equal to a fraction, you can cross multiply. One times nine minus three X is just nine minus three X. X minus three times X. Well, I'm gonna to have to distribute in a little bit, so I'm gonna to need to put parentheses around the group of two, getting ready to distribute coming up next. I'll just go ahead and do it. So that would be X squared minus three X, and then I'll just bring down this nine minus three X. Anytime we get a quadratic, we need to get everything over on the same side. So I'm gonna add the three X, and look what happens, they cancel. And I'm gonna also subtract the nine because I want zero on that left-hand side. So I'm getting X squared minus nine, which is a difference of two perfect squares. Factors down to two binomial factors, one with a plus, one with a minus. So X plus three, X minus three. And then when I break these apart, set them each equal to zero and solve, I get X equals negative three and X equals positive three. Okay, and yeah. So now I need to check. When you're checking 
in a rational equation, you have to look at what makes the denominator zero. If it makes the denominator zero, it ain't the answer. So if I plug in a negative three here, negative three minus three is negative six. That's not zero, that's fine. But if I plug in a positive three, three minus three is zero. We can't have zero in the denominator. So x equals three is extraneous, which means x equals negative three is the only solution for that equation. Okay, you just have to check to see if it makes the denominator zero or not. And that's number five. Number six, can I fit it right here? I think I can. Number six, we've got a series. 9 plus 13 plus 17 plus 21 plus dot 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 plus 37 and it's a multiple choice question but let's first see if this is arithmetic or geometric so let's see looks like we're adding uh, 4 9 10 11 12 13 yep so plus 4 so that means the common difference is a 4 it is arithmetic so when you're trying to find the correct uh, summation notation you need the explicit formula the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times the quantity n minus 1 so I need the first term is a 9 the common difference is a 4 need to distribute the 4 so that would be 9 plus 4n minus 4, combine like terms, 9 minus 4 is 5, so this is 4n plus 5, okay? Remember, in summation notation, that expression, that explicit formula has to be in parentheses, and it's going to go n equals 1 to however many terms that is. It looks like, because all of them have an 8 out up top, it should be like that. Now, they didn't use the letter N, they used the letter K, but I'm looking for 4K plus 5 in parentheses, pretty much. And that would be uh, letter D. So D was the correct answer to number 6. says the sum of the first nine terms of a geometric sequence is 2044. The common ratio is two. What is the fourth term? So it's a sum of a geometric sequence. So that means this is a finite sum. And we had a formula for that. It's S sub N equals A1 times one minus R to the N all over one minus R. Okay. So let's write down what they gave us. They said we're the sum of the first nine terms, so the number of terms n is nine. The sum is 2044. So s of nine is 2044. The common ratio is a two, so r equals two. What is the fourth term? So a sub four is what we're looking for. So what we're gonna need to do is plug in s of n, r, and n, and we gotta solve for a1. So S sub 9, the sum is 2044 equals, don't know A1, times 1 minus the R is a 2, the N is a 9, so 2 to the 9th all over 1 minus 2. And we need to clean that up. So in my calculator, 1 minus 2 to the, oops, not 2 squared, 1 minus 2 to the 9th is negative 511. 1 minus 2 is a negative 1, so I'm dividing by negative 1, which is just changing the sign to a positive 511. So this is 2044 equals A1 times 511. And then to solve for A1, I just have to divide both sides by 511. So 2044 divided by 511 is 4. So A1 is equal to 4. Well, that's the first term. I need the fourth term. So remember, the common ratio, the number we multiply by, is a 2. 4 times 2 is 8. So the second term is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So the third term is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. So the fourth term is 32, and that means the answer is C.
great. An infinite geometric series. So that one has a formula, S equals A1 over one minus R. That's the formula we have to use for this one because it's infinite. It says in an infinite series, the A1 is six. So A1 is equal to six, first term is six. And we have a sum of nine, S equals nine. It says find R. So R equals question mark. We don't know what it is. Okay, so we gotta plug in all the things. So S is nine. A1 is 6, don't know what R is. We need to solve for R, so we need to get it out of the denominator, which means I need to multiply by 1 minus R to both sides. These two will cancel, which is what we wanted, but we need to distribute that 9, so it's 9 minus 9R nine is equal to 6, and we need to solve for R. So we're going to need to subtract 9 from both sides, negative 9r is equal to negative 3 and then we're going to need to divide both sides by that negative 9 so that we can solve for r a negative divided by a negative is positive r is equal to that reduces to one third so r is one third and you had to type that into the box there I don't remember if you have to put R equals one third or just one third, but I'm sure if you checked it, you figured it out. All right, number nine. It says, which is the cubic polynomial in standard form with roots zero, two, and negative one? So we know our roots are zero, two, and negative one. We have to figure out what polynomial these came from. So we're working backwards. So in factored form, X equals zero would just be X. In factored form, x equals 2 would be x minus 2. In factored form, x equals negative 1 would be x plus 1. And then we just need to multiply that out. You got to multiply 2 at a time. It doesn't matter which 2 you start with. I'm going to go ahead and distribute this one in. x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is a negative 2x. And now we got to distribute these. x squared times x is x cubed x squared times 1 is just an x squared. Negative 2x times x is a negative 2x squared. Negative 2x times 1 is a negative 2x. We need to combine like terms on those squareds. 1x squared minus 2x squared is a negative x squared minus 2x. So this is our answer. Both of the signs in the middle are negative, so x cubed minus x squared minus 2x, so the answer is C. And that's number nine. Number 10, long division. I think I can fit that right here. So number 10, we have our divisor is negative 2x plus 3. We're dividing into 4x to the fourth plus 12x cubed plus 7x squared plus x plus 6. Okay, so first of all, I need to set my goal. My first goal is to get a 4x to the fourth. So we got to ask ourselves, what do we multiply by negative 2x to get positive 4x to the fourth? Well, I need a negative 2x cubed. So notice how I line those up. And then we'll distribute. Negative 2x cubed times negative 2x is 4x to the fourth. Negative 2x cubed times three is a negative 6x cubed. Then we gotta do the sign change. And then those cancel out. 12x cubed plus 6x cubed is 18x cubed. Bring down the next term and do it all over again. This time, our new goal is an 18x cubed. So we gotta ask ourselves, what do we multiply by negative 2x to get 18x cubed? And I'm gonna need a negative 9x squared. Negative 9x squared times negative 2x is 18x cubed. Negative 9x squared times three is a negative 27x squared. And we gotta do the sign change. These cancel, 7x squared plus 27x squared is 34x squared. Bring down the next term and do it all over again. So 
So this time our new goal is to get a, whoops, a 34x squared. So we have to ask ourselves, what do we multiply by a negative 2x to get 34x squared? I need a negative 17x and then distribute. Negative 17x times negative 2x is 34x squared. Negative 17 times 3, I know it's negative 51x. And then we need to do the sign change. So these cancel. X plus 51X is 52X, and then bring down that plus six, and do this one more time. So our new goal is a 52X, and now, let's see, we need to get 52X. We have to ask ourselves what to multiply by a negative 2X to get this. I'm gonna need a negative 26. Negative 26 times negative 2 is 52x. Negative 26 times 3, I know it's negative. 26 times 3 is 78. Then we got to do the sign change. These cancel. 6 plus 78 is 84. So there's my remainder. It's positive. So you put on the end plus 84 over the divisor was negative 2x plus 3. So this whole thing is what you had to type into the box, okay? And then part B asks if negative 2x plus 3 uh, is a factor of that polynomial. And because it, we have a remainder, it did not divide in evenly. So for part B, the answer is no, it's not a factor. And that was number 10. Number 11, I need a new page. Number 11, we're finding the roots of x to the fourth plus 3x cubed plus, oh no, that's a minus, minus 5x squared minus 9x plus 10. And we have drop down menus. So in the first drop down menu, those are your clues what to try with synthetic division. And the smallest number is a positive one, so I'm going to try that first. Okay, we've got to write down the coefficients. You always bring down the first number and then you multiply times the number in the box. One times one is one and then you add these numbers down. Three plus one is four. And then you do it again. Four times one is four. Negative five plus four is negative one. Negative one times one is negative one. Negative nine minus one is negative ten. Negative ten times one is negative ten. We got our zero. This is what we want. That means x equals one is a zero and that is one of the solutions. We can select that from the first excuse me, drop down menu. So we started with an x to the fourth. We just divided out an x. So now we're at an x cubed, but we need to keep going. So I'm gonna use these new numbers in synthetic division. So one, four, negative one, negative 10. You don't ever use the zero on the end. Okay, I just need to pick a number to put in that box. So in the second drop down menu, I've got two, negative two, 10 and negative 10. So I would try the two first, but when you try the two, it's not gonna work. So try the negative two. When you bring down the one, one times negative two is negative two. Four minus two is a two. Two times negative two is negative four. Negative one minus four is negative five. Negative five times negative two is positive 10. That adds up to zero. So X equals negative two is the second root which means you can select negative two from the second drop-down menu. So now we divided out an X, bringing it down to an X cubed. We divided out another X, so now this is a one X squared plus two X minus five. And I have to use the quadratic formula because my last two drop-downs have decimals in them. So we need to identify the ABCs. A is one, B is two, C is negative five. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is two squared, which is four minus four AC all over two A. So notice the X equals negative B plus or minus square root of B squared. I already did it because 
two squared is four. So I went ahead and did that in my head, okay? Now, next I see this double negative here, which changes to a positive, and we need to clean this up. So it's negative two plus or minus the square root of four plus four times five is 20, so that's 24 all over two. Get our two solutions, and this is calculator time. So I have to do the plus, I have to do the minus negative two plus the square root of 24, and then divide that by two is negative, or sorry, that's positive 1.4, there's a glare. Negative two minus the square root of 24 divided by two is a negative 3.4. So you would select those from the third and fourth drop down menus. And those are the four roots. number 12. We've got an even degree function. So I'm just going to draw a picture of the graph. This is how i got to show my work. It's the funky W. Okay. What do we know about the funky W? Well, first of all, this is an x to the fourth because it's like a parabola, but it's definitely not a parabola. Okay. So that means we've got an even degree. Both ends are facing up. So it's got a positive leading coefficient. This one is crossing the x-axis in two spots. So that means it has two real roots. But I know because it's an x to the fourth, because it's a funky w, that it's got four roots. So if two of them are real, that means the other two are imaginary. Remember, eyes always come in pairs, okay? So, from the, the drop downs, you had to select that this was even, it's positive, it's got two real roots and two imaginary roots. And that was number 12. Number 13, the last one, is another synthetic division problem. Use the remainder theorem to determine which of the following binomials are factors of P of X. So P of X is equal to X cubed minus two X squared minus five X plus six, and we have all these factors to try in synthetic division. Remember, we always wanna start with the positive one. So this is factored form. So in solution form, that would be a one, that would be negative one, two, negative two, three, negative three, when you solve each of those for X, okay? So let's start with the one, because usually the answer is a one. So one, negative two, negative five, and six. Bring down the first number. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. That adds up to 0. So x equals 1 is a root, which means x minus 1 is a factor. Okay? So now we took it from a degree 3 to a degree 2. And we can product sum to find the other two factors. I know I can use product sum because, hello, I'm finding factors, so it's factorable. So the product is negative 6, the sum is negative 1. So let's see, um, I'm going to have to use 3 and 2 because they're one apart from each other. And the 3 will need to be negative because negative 3 plus 2 equals negative 1. These are the droids I'm looking for. So x minus 3 and x plus 2. So from the drop down, um, that means I need X minus one, this one, and that's letter F. X minus three, this one is B, and X plus two, this one is C. So BCF was number 13, and that is the whole thing.